Hi everyone, before we begin this balancing equations lesson, if you can make sure that you have downloaded this lesson sheet if you are able, and if not, you can certainly just write out these examples as we go through them. As we go through this lesson, you also want to have your periodic table on hand and probably your polyatomic um, ions list so that you can use that to assist you with your formula writing. Okay, so as I mentioned, that's sort of a common thread as we move through. So you will have watched the previous lessons regarding word equations versus balanced chemical equations. And in this case, we're going to be doing both given these sentences and information provided. So here it tells us that we have zinc and lead to nitrate react to form zinc nitrate and lead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the word equation first. And I always put the reactants on the left and we put the products on the right hand side. We separate the reactants with a plus and we do the same thing with the product. So if we're forming something, then that has to be on the right hand side. Okay, there we go. Now we want to watch out for any of our diatomic molecules. So those are all of our Hofbrinkles, hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, and chlorine. If any of those appear, then we have to make sure in our balanced equation that we double them up and we put a subscript of two. But zinc or lead are neither of those. So what we're going to do in our balanced chemical equation, we're going to write down Zn. And I know that zinc is a solid because on my periodic table, it is a black symbol, which means it's a solid. Now, when we are reacting it with lead to nitrate, this is a compound, but it has to be in aqueous form. So what that means is it has to be dissolved in solution in order for zinc to replace the lead to form zinc nitrate. So I'm going to put down PB. They're telling me to pick a valence of two. I look up the polyatomic ion and nitrate is NO3 and it has a valence of negative one. When I do my crisscross, the two comes outside and I'm gonna put down in little subscript brackets, aqueous. Aqueous means dissolved in solution. Zinc we know is a solid metal. Now notice that zinc nitrate is formed and there's no Roman numeral and that's because zinc does not have more than one valence option. So when I look on the periodic table, zinc has a valence of two only. And nitrate, we saw, was NO3 with a charge of negative one. And again, if you forget how to formula write, you're gonna wanna go back to the previous modules, right, in unit one. We crisscross, and we're also gonna write that down as aqueous plus lead, and lead is a solid metal. And again, how do I know that? Because on my periodic table, it is a black symbol, so that indicates it's a solid. Now, in this case, I want to take a look and see if everything is balanced. Now, I'm going to do this fairly quickly here, but I'll show you how to break it down a little bit later on. So when I am balancing, I always want to leave oxygen and hydrogen to the end, and I want to balance everything else first. So here I have one zinc, one zinc. I have one lead, one lead. I have two nitrogen because remember that two applies. I have two nitrogen, six oxygen, six oxygen. So this is all balanced nicely. There would be coefficients here of one. We don't generally have to write those in because it's assumed that it's a one. Okay, let's move on to the next one. We have aluminum bromide. Now this is just a binary compound. So we'll write the word equation first. Aluminum bromide and chlorine gas react. So we know that those are coming together plus chlorine gas yields. Now it says aluminum chloride and bromine gas. Now it looks like I'm going to um, 
run out of space here, but try and fit it in. Bromine gas. Okay. So we've got our word equation. Would have been nice had I left a little bit more room to make it all linear, but that's okay. Now, aluminum bromide. What do I do? I go find aluminum on my periodic table. It has a charge of plus three. Bromine is a negative one. I do my crisscross aluminum bromide. Perfect. That is a compound. And in order to react, it, have to, it has to be in aqueous form. Okay, now it's going to react with chlorine gas. This is one of my Hofbrinkles. So I have to remember that when chlorine is written, I have to write it as Cl2. And then they tell me it's a gas. So I put a little G there to indicate the state. We end up making aluminum chloride. Now, again, aluminum is a plus three. Chlorine is a minus one. That will be aqueous because most compounds are aqueous when we have to get them to react. Because if I just had a mound of aluminum chloride, which is like a white powder, it's not going to react, right? It has to be dissolved first. And then plus bromine. And this is another Hofbrinkel. So when it's by itself, I double it up and it tells me that it's a gas. So I balance everything but hydrogen and oxygen first. Notice that I don't have any hydrogen or oxygen, so I can start with anything really. One aluminum, one aluminum. Okay, now let's move on to bromine. I have three bromine, and over here I have two. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you come up with a number that both of those subscripts can divide into evenly. So I think of the number six. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a coefficient of two out front. Now this tells me that I have two aluminum and I have six bromine. So then I have to put a three here in order to make that work. So I have six bromine. Now in that process, it did change my number of aluminums. So I need to fix that so that I have two aluminums. Now here I have two chlorine, but now I have six chlorine on the right. So I need to put a three here in order to make those balance. Okay, now we're gonna move on to sodium phosphate and calcium chloride. So sodium phosphate is reacting. So again, we're doing the word equations first with calcium chloride. So again, you must put a plus you never use an equal sign. This is not a math equation. You must use an arrow to indicate yields. So it's forming calcium phosphate and sodium chloride. Now you may recognize this from grade 10. When you have two compounds coming together, those are called double displacement reactions or double replacement reactions and they swap partners. Now, when they do that, you have to have them in aqueous form again. So sodium phosphate, sodium is a plus one. Phosphate is one of our polyatomic groups. So that is PO4 and it has a valence of three. Now we crisscross and the three comes down here. Now, technically I should drop the brackets because I don't need them. Calcium chloride, calcium has a plus two, chlorine has a minus one, we crisscross. Now there's gonna come to a point, I forgot to put aqueous here, AQ, AQ. There comes a point when um, you don't need to show those charges and you're gonna be able to just do that no problem. So when we're making calcium phosphate, you can see that calcium is Ca with a plus two. There's our phosphate again, which we already had looked up. We do our crisscross, the three is here and the two is here. And then we have plus sodium chloride. All of these compounds are aqueous. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna balance. Doesn't matter which one we start off with, we just have to leave oxygen until the very end because that is sort of one of the rules that we wanna keep in mind, okay? All right, so let's just see here, here we go. 
So let's take a look. We've got three sodium. So here I'm going to put a three in front because over here there's assumed that there's only one. Remember that inside this bracket, there's only one phosphorus. And over here, there's two phosphorus. Okay, so that might um, mess things up a little bit. So if there's two there, then I have to put a two in front here because I can't go put a two outside the bracket. I can't change any numbers. No subscripts can ever be changed. The only thing that you can do is add coefficients. So that's going to change my number of sodium now. So I fixed my phosphorus, but now my sodium has six. So I got to go back to over here and I've got to put a six. Okay. Now sodiums look good and phosphorus looks good. Now I can move on to calcium. Calcium here, there's a one and here there's a three. So I'm going to put a three here and chlorine, there's six. Oh, and very good. There's six chlorine. Let's just double check our oxygens. So here you have four oxygen, but there's a two out front. So that means that you have eight oxygens on the left. And over here, you have two times the four, which is eight. So that happens to be balanced. So this is a two, three, one, which you don't have to write, and then a six. All right, last one for the first page. Here we have potassium metal and chlorine gas. Now, potassium metal, not a Hofbrinkle, okay? So I'm just going to bypass the word equation right now. So potassium, and they tell us it's a metal, so it's going to be a solid, single element, plus chlorine gas, that's one of our Hofbrinkles. Now, it combines to form potassium chloride. Now, in this case, because you have a solid coming together with this, it's not dissolved in solution or anything like that. That's just going to be a solid. Okay. Now, when I take a look, one potassium, one potassium, two chlorine, one chlorine. So you're going to put a two in front. That's going to change your number of potassiums. So you're going to put a two in front over here. Okay. So let's go on to this page here. And I'm just going to pull up my simulation at the same time. So here, this simulation shows that word equation or that balanced equation, but in its unbalanced form. So here is that same equation in its skeletal form. So what that means is it's not yet balanced. So we have a coefficient of one, one, and one. We tend to leave those out, but when we're writing tests and so forth, we sometimes put them in. So what we're going to do is we take a look up here and it shows that we have two atoms of nitrogen when you have one molecule of nitrogen. Here you have two atoms of hydrogen on the left hand side when you have one molecule. And when you have one molecule of NH3, which is ammonia, you have one nitrogen and you have three atoms of hydrogen. So we can see that none of the nitrogens are balanced, none of the hydrogens are balanced. Okay, so what we need to do is we have to leave hydrogen to the end and we're going to balance our nitrogens first. So I'm going to increase this by two. Now I see that now the nitrogens are even and we have the hydrogens that are not. So if there are six atoms of hydrogen on the right, then we also need six atoms of hydrogen on the left. And so we put a coefficient of three. So this helps us to conserve the conservation of mass. So we have the same number and type of atoms on either side of the equation. So we have a one, a three, and a two, okay? Now for our purposes, we'll just write the one in for now. Now let's take a look at this next example. We have aluminum, O2, diatomic oxygen, and aluminum oxide. So here's our simulation. And what I want to do is leave oxygen to the end and let's take a look at aluminum first. I've got one aluminum on the left, I have two on the right. So let's increase our aluminums on the left. Perfect, those are balanced. Now we come to oxygen. We've got two oxygen on the left, we've got three oxygen on the right. You want to come up with a number that both of those subscripts can divide into evenly and that would be the number six. So if I multiply this by three, we get six atoms of oxygen. And if I multiply this by two, I get six atoms of oxygen. 
but then that makes my aluminums unbalanced again. So this is an easy fix. Whenever you have a singular element, those are easy. So if I want four on the right, then I want four on the left and we have nice and balanced. In this case, we ended up with a four. Um, we had a two here and a three. So that was nicely balanced, okay? Now it gets a little bit more tricky when we get into combustion type reactions sometimes. And this might be a way that you've been taught in the past to go about doing this. So down the middle, you can list the different types of elements that you see in your balanced equation. So here I see carbon, I see hydrogen, and I see oxygen. Now on the left, right now, as I see it written, there are two carbon and there's one carbon. Here I have six hydrogen, over here I have two hydrogen. On the left I have two oxygen, and on the right I have, oops, I have to add two plus one, I have three oxygen. So neither of those are balanced. We're gonna leave hydrogen and oxygen to the end, and what we'll do is we'll balance um, the carbons first. So what I'll do right now, I'll put a two in front here, and in doing that, that changes my number of carbons to two, but it also affects my number of high, um, oxygens. So I've got four and five. So now this changes to five on this side. Now let's go on to the hydrogens. Here I've got six on the left and I have two over here. So to make it six, I would put a three here. So that changes my number of hydrogens to six. So we're getting closer. But now you're going to see that my number of oxygens is off. So I've got four plus the three, which gives me seven. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky because you have an odd number and an even number. This is my little trick. So if I have seven on the right, then I want seven on the left. So what I want to do is I want to think of a number. What would I put here to multiply by two that would give me seven? Well, this is where it's a little tricky. If you put a three here, three times two is six. That's not enough. If I put a four, four times two is eight. That's too many because I only want seven. If I put a 3.5, I know this is weird. Stay with me. I know that you can never have a decimal as a coefficient. Never. But I know that 3.5 times two gives me seven. We can never leave it that way. So then you have to ask yourself, well, what would I multiply that by? What do you multiply 0.5 by to make it a whole number? Well, you would multiply it by two. If you do that to one coefficient, you must do it to all others. So I'm gonna multiply by two, by two, by two. And when I do that, I should get something that's balanced. So this will give me a coefficient of two, of seven, of four and of six. Let's take a look to see if that works with our simulation. Let's balance the carbons first. There we go. Then we're gonna go on to the hydrogens and we're gonna balance those. Now the oxygens, it gets a little tricky, okay? We've got seven like we said and then two. So when I think about a number, I wanna put a 3.5 here so that I can multiply everything by two, but it doesn't allow me to do that. But I know in my head, if I put a 3.5 here and I multiplied everything by two, it should work. So this would become a two, this would become a seven, this would become a four, and this would become a six. And as you can see, all of the number and type of atoms on the left and on the right are balanced. Here we go, let's do this method here. I'm gonna show I've got lead, I see oxygen, I see hydrogen and I see chlorine. Now, hopefully we're gonna be able to move away from this and you're gonna be able to just balance by inspection. So I wanna count how many I see on both sides to begin with. One lead, one lead. I've got two oxygen on the left and I've got one oxygen on the right. Hydrogens, I've got two plus the one. And over here, I have two. My chlorines, I've got one. 
and over here I have two. Now you can balance either the lead or the chlorine. You have to leave oxygen and hydrogen to the end. It's best to do that. So the leads seem great. Perfect. I've got one and one. Let's go to the chlorines. So you would want to multiply this by two in order to give you two chlorines, but that does affect your number of hydrogens. So now I have two hydrogens plus the two hydrogens, making that a four. Okay, we're getting a little closer here, right? Now we're gonna go on to the hydrogen. So when I have to pick, I always do hydrogen before oxygen. So then I'm gonna put a two here, and that will give me four hydrogens, but it changes my number of oxygens. Oh, it actually changed it for the better. So notice that I have all the number of atoms the same on both sides. Now we can just put a one in here for now, but if you left it out, that's okay too. All right, what I'd like you to do for the remainder of this worksheet, I'd like you to try a few more of the word equations and trying to come up with a balanced equation for that, and then trying to balance these ones at the bottom by inspection, and then you can go ahead and check your answers at the bottom of the page to see if you're on the right track. There's also more um, practice that you can do prior to the final evaluation if you need.